All right. After over 200 transactions later in commercial real estate and making all the mistakes in the book, these are the two biggest nightmare stories that I want to talk about today that are fresh in my mind. And you'll learn a lot from it because if you listen and avoid the mistakes that I made, um, because just being not as, I guess, educated as I should have been, I'm a person that likes to just take action, dive in first, and then make mistakes as things go by. But sometimes those mistakes can be very draining and can be very um, bad for the bank account, for lack of a better phrase, uh, losing money. So these two stories are probably two of the most recent stories that I haven't talked about before that are killing me right now. So the first story is a fourplex that I bought in Escondido. And I bought this property in 2021 for a pretty good deal, but it was a huge, huge fixer. It was three structures. It has a house in the back, house in the middle, and then a duplex in the front. It's on like an acre lot, but uh, basically everything was in shambles. We inherited tenants that were paying like 40% below market rent. So the first hurdle was, you know, moving these tenants to other units and they had a very hard time finding anything that was, you know, comparable uh, to anything out there in Escondido because this is when like COVID was at its peak. Um, well, not, I guess COVID was also happening, but also like rents were like skyrocketing in 2021. So no one could find anything. Everything was being taken. So that was a huge hurdle I went through. And the one thing that I really wish I knew before trying to kick out these tenants was I wish I knew how to negotiate cash for keys better. I think I was too cheap at the time and I didn't want to spend money on, on removing tenants faster. But the thing is, when you go through an eviction process or any sort of tenant moves out, move out process, it's 60 days plus like another six to 12 months with the court, right? Like the, the eviction court is so backed up right now, even to this day, that it takes a very long time to legally evict someone. Like there's this guy named Mike who was living in the studio of the back unit in the duplex. And this guy was a total just low life, like uh, had no car, had like a beat up dirt bike he drove around, didn't have a job. Um, he was living with his dad in this little studio and the dad, you know, sadly passed away from COVID. But when that happened, things got way worse because this kid had no money. So he was just straight up squatting, didn't pay me rent once. And he just milked the clock. He was in the unit, wouldn't return my calls, wouldn't return my texts, wouldn't respond to any letters. All he would do is just sit in that unit and not move and do anything. Like this guy was a straight like nightmare tenant. And I'm telling you, when we went through the eviction, um, it took us more than a year. Like I think total like took us 14 to 15 months and think about how brutal that is. Like when you are trying to kick out a tenant and they're not paying rent, they're squatting in your unit and the rent loss per month on that unit is like 1800 bucks a month if I would have renovated and rented it. So if you do 1800 a month, just easy math times 10 months, that's 18 grand, right? That's 18 grand that you could have had in your pocket, but instead there's a tenant squatting in there. So, the smart thing I should have done and the smart thing that you should do when you're buying properties in California, because yes, California is the best location to buy because it's California with the best weather, a lot of jobs, but you know, the, the biggest pitfall in buying California is the landlord tenant laws, right? The tenant laws are more favorable against um, the landlords. So what I should have done and what I'm doing now is I am negotiating a cash for keys. And it's a, two, it's a two page or one page piece of paper that my property manager brings to the tenant and I say, hey, offer this tenant five grand, sometimes even 10 grand to get out in 45 to 60 days. And we even make it an incentive to make them go, move out even faster. We'll say, hey, you don't have to pay any rent, but if you leave in 30 days, I'll give you six grand. But if you live in 60 days, I'll give you four grand, right? Uh, because when they move out a month faster, that means that's a month sooner I can start my renovations, uh, which means you know I'm, I'm gonna rent that unit faster for a way higher rent. And 
um, stabilize the property faster, so I can refinance faster. So all these things happen with speed, right? Speed is super important in brokering real estate and investing in real estate. Real estate in general, speed kills. So that was the first phase of the nightmare story. Now it gets worse. Um, after that happened, um, we, we ended up going into escrow with a buyer because after we got the tenant out, we were so sick of the property. We're like, you know what? Let's just list the property as it sits today. The buyer can be, um, the buyer can be responsible for, um, leasing the studio and renovating the studio unit, right? That Mike was in. So we were fed up the property, list the property for like 1.6 million, ended up going to escrow at like one five. And, um, in the escrow period, the buyers were first time home, not first time home buyers, first time investors. Well, they are first time investors because we're still in escrow with them today. And we went into escrow like over a year ago, like early 2023. As I make this video, it's almost, it's, yeah, it's, no, we went to escrow like February of 2023 and right now it's like March. So it's been, a, it's been 13 months and we're still in escrow. And here's why. So, about 30 days in escrow, you know, the buyers did all their inspections, you know, looked at the due diligence and decided that they don't want to do any repairs on this property. And even though three out of the four units were fully renovated and in great condition, they were too scared to renovate that one studio. So let me stop right there. Mistake number one was us not just doing the work ourselves correctly. Mistake number two is us deciding to, hey, I'll tell you what, um, we'll do renovations in escrow because that's what you want us to do. That's fine. We were very, very reluctant against it. And so was my partner and I should have listened to my partner. And, uh, so the second mistake you should never, ever make in real estate is if you own a property or if you're selling a property for a client and you're representing a seller, never let that client or never let yourself do the work for a buyer in escrow. Just make it easy. Give them a price reduction or a credit and just wipe your hands and say goodbye. Right, because uh, when you do the repairs in escrow, you take on all the liability. The buyers can make changes. Uh, you have to do exactly how they want it to do. They're always on your ass, pestering you, annoying the shit out of you, like they're doing today. Like literally this morning, I got a text from their agent saying, "Hey, what's going on with the city?" Because we're still waiting on uh, permits from the city, which I'll go over in a second. So, um, <laughs> honestly, I don't think I'm gonna have time to tell the second story because this first story is such a nightmare. So, anyways. Um, <clears throat> we, we finally decide, okay, if you keep the price at 1.5 million, we'll do the r repairs for the studio. That's fine. Okay. Because, um, if that didn't happen, they wanted to cancel, which we should have just canceled, but we did it. So, we, we, so we start doing the repairs, right? And the part of the story that I didn't tell you yet is that during like this entire negotiation, this entire escrow process, and even since we bought the property, there has been this massive development right behind us. This developer named Alvin, he's building 18 twin homes behind us. And when a developer develops a big project, there's a lot of city inspectors from the city of Escondido or any city that you're in, they're gonna go walk that property to make sure that everything in the new development project is being done right. Me being a naive dumbass, I didn't, I didn't realize in my head, and this is the biggest mistake that you have to take home that I really think you should write down in your notes or something, and my naive, dumb, dumb self didn't understand that, hey, when these people are walking by my property or driving by my property to inspect this huge development, they're probably gonna turn to the left and see that there's work being done to this property right now. And we got lucky because while we were renovating the three homes on the lot that we own, the development didn't start yet. They were still permitting the units. But now they're like full scale permitting the units. It's been a long time. It's been a year, right? Since we evicted that tenant, it's taken a long time. So now they're in full go, you know, developing that property and these dickhead city inspectors, and they've been dickheads to me. Let me tell you, <clears throat> these dickhead city inspectors saw that that little studio, you know, is being renovated by us, by our contractor. And they're like, Hmm, I don't think I saw any permits being pulled for that studio. So, I'm going to go in and check our records and see what's going on. <sighs> and man, when they saw that there was no permits, because keep in mind, permits take a long time. So us as investors, my clients, no one gets permits for a standard like interior renovations it just doesn't happen. 
but we got super unlucky and we got red tagged. We got, vi we got a, a city violation tag on our door saying, you need to pull permits for this property. And when this happens mid escrow, let me tell you, it's an absolute freaking nightmare. It's delayed the escrow a year, right? So we've just been sitting in escrow at this price with these buyers pestering us every single week this morning. And now we're battling with the city to get this thing done when I spent like five to 10 grand drawing up plans to get those permits that were on the door that they sent us. But now the city inspector is saying, hey, you actually got to add more stuff because this, this, and this was not done correctly before we came here, which is complete and utter BS because if the work has already been done, you shouldn't be calling that stuff out. A nice, normal civil city inspector should not do that. And this has happened to me before and um, this is uncharted territory because even though I had done unpermitted work before that city inspectors caught, they didn't do anything. They just focused on the work that was still being done. That was for an EDU that I built. But anyways, um, yeah, it just sucks. Um, where was I at? But in this project right now, as we sit today, I have been in escrow for 13 months. They're making us revise the permits, revise the plans in order to add more things onto the plan so that they can tell us to permit more stuff. I'm dealing with this architect that is constantly asking me for stuff. These and this inspectors on my ass and these buyers are on my ass. So it's been a terribly stressful and nightmare process that I want you to avoid. So that's the reason why I'm making this video. I really hope you avoid this crazy mistake I made. And I've gone too long already, so I'll stop the video and save the other story for later. But man, save yourself from a lot of stress, anxiety, and unwanted thoughts about stupid buyers and inspectors and contractors and architects and all these people up your ass. So hope that was helpful. Again, um, as always, if you enjoyed the video or got value out of it, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could, you know, share it, like it so I could, you know, help more people and get the word out there. But anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time or listening. If you're listening on my podcast, thanks.